All right, and we are live. What is good, family? Welcome to another show of Black Men Travels. Today, we have a special guest in the building. We have Drees of WTU Community, which stands for World Travelers United. What's going on, Drees? What's going on, everybody? It's me, Drees, in the place. Happy to be here tonight with Mr. Ferris. How's everybody? What's going on, eh? Man, nothing much, man. Nothing much, man. Is it cold out there in uh, New Orleans, or it's still pretty warm? No, nah, it's not that. It's not that bad. It's about uh, forty nine, fifty, right about now. Okay, okay. Y'all, y'all preparing uh, for a little game down there uh, Sunday against the, the Super Bowl champions, ain't you? Well, yeah. You know, it, it, everybody think it's gonna be a good game. I don't think it's gonna be a good game. It's gonna be kind of like a runaway. Uh, with who? With uh, Philly or, or New Orleans? It's gonna be New Orleans, but my thing okay. is, if, okay, if Philly win, nobody gonna be surprised, right? You know, right, right. right. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not. Got gotcha, you, know. Gotcha, you know, you know, we all NFL South, so you know, I'm a Falcon fan, diehard Falcon fan. So we, you know, but we roll with each other. We ain't like the other teams and other uh regions of the country. We, we try to roll with NFL South. If y'all make it, you know, to the Super Bowl or whatnot, you know, we're going to go for y'all. So that's how we kind of get down to the South. But, man, you just got back from Columbia, right? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, how was it down there, man? Well, first of all, what what was the weather like down there in Columbia? Because the Columbia is in Medellin, correct? Right. Correct. The weather down there is like, you know, can y'all see me? Yeah. Yeah. We see you good. I'm on an old ass computer, but I'm pretty sure that shit look like Pac-Man and shit. <laughs> no, you good, man. It rained. Uh-huh. And after it rained, the cold it got was like 59, but the hottest it got was like 85. Okay. You know, it was like you walk outside with shorts or a three-piece suit, you'll still be comfortable. You okay. Know? Now I heard down there, maybe this is a rumor or not, but people don't wear like shorts down there in Columbia or something. Like, did they, did they ask like a tourist thing to wear? No, shorts? what it is is that it's not like a beach town, like, like say Sasua. Mm -hmm. So if you know you don't do like shorts and sandals, but yeah, if you got you some some shorts or some nice uh, Nikes on or some nice Adidas on, you know, okay, that's, you know that's, that's what it's about because. Uh, we was walking through Community 13, and they was looking at the brother Shahad's shoes. Shout out to Shahad. Uh, when they looked at his shoes, I guess they ain't never saw no Adidas like, like how Shahad had. So, you know, it, it's all about what type of shoes you wear. You could wear shorts. You know, you just can't be like acting like you walking through a beach, you know. So you're going to wear shorts and like sandals and stuff like that. You, you know, you're going to be inside. So, Otherwise, you go get some crazy looks. That's oh, because okay. I I know I went through uh Bogota Airport in a layover to Rio de Janeiro, man, and in the airport everybody was like real fashionable. You thought you would think it was like the first day of high school or something. Like in Colombia, they pretty fresh, right? They they yeah. dress out there. Yeah. Okay. You know, it, 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 well, go ahead. All right. Brian, what's good, brother? I see, I see you in the chat. Well, I see you on on the stream. What's going on? What's going on? How y'all doing, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, we doing good, man. We talking about your favorite country, brother. <laughs> oh man, oh, you know it, you know it. I'm I'm chomping at the bits to go back, man. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Now, now, Drees, what would you say, just off the top? Because brothers want to know, I, I, it's a lot of brothers in the group that go back and forth, you know, uh, from the Dominican Republic, you know, uh, maybe other countries. What do you, what's like the big difference in the Dominican Republic and Colombia, you would say? Like, what's that big, big difference starting off the bat? First off, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's, it's a city, you know, it's infrastructure. It's like Medellin is like Manhattan. And it well, I, I, Medellin is like Manhattan, and it makes uh, Sasua look like uh, a trailer park in West Virginia or some shit. You know, no disrespect, but I'm just saying that you got way more opportunities and way more 
uh things to get into in medellin okay that's the difference number one you have one spot to go to in Sassu, you know but right. in medellin they got that spot in this area in this area in that area way over there you know they have a variety of places to go okay Sassua, you only have just the strip and the beach. Okay. And, and, and Brian, what would you say would be the major difference? Uh, pretty much kind of piggyback off what he said. That it's going to be um, the infrastructure. It's, I mean, you know, you, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to compare because it's so big. You know, mm -hmm. I've been to, I've been to Bogota, I've been to Medellin, you know, and they have a beach as well. You know, you have Cartagena, you have Batanquilla, you have um, Santa Marta, which is which is very very nice. And you know, those are beach cities, and it's hot. I got a buddy of mine right now. He's in Cartagena, and he said it is hot <laughs> with a capital H. So, um, but yeah, but yeah, Sasua is just. I've only been there once, and it's been several years ago, so I can't really speak um, on it from a um, you know a, a a recent standpoint but even when i went there yes it is small and based on what my my guys have been there here most recently and pretty much the same things it's small a couple of streets a couple of strips still fun but you have a lot more opportunities in in many like see my, myself i'm a little older now so i'm looking more into business real estate um more so on a on a, on a different type of a level than i used to be on so uh, when it comes to that yes um that those are the differences and uh as as well you can your 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 way of life the quality of life i think is a whole lot better in um in colombia like i said it's that's just me me personally okay so colombia has a better infrastructure uh in the dominican republic does that trickle down to the difference in, in the women from the dr and uh medellin uh, Dries. Well, I'm gonna say this: they are not walking up to you and grabbing your balls before they even know your name. Okay, you know, <laughs> all right. They they are very nice and very formal, mm -hmm. be it a pro or red. You know, and it makes you look at them as, you know, and, and, and you know they they all wholesome. You know, you know the 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 chick that's in school, well, that's actually in school, not the one that's just sending you the text telling you she need money for school, but the one that's in school, uh, the one that's just a a, a home mom, and, and just as well as the little uh quote unquote thuggish chick. All of them come to you to say, hey, my name is Maria. I live in such and such, you know, and then whatever conversation comes after that comes after that, you know, they just formal with it, you know, but, uh, that's, that's one big difference right there. Okay. And, 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 and it definitely plays into your wanting to come back, you know, cause I'm definitely wanting more to go back to Medellin than I do, uh, say, Sassou. Okay. Okay. Br Brian, would you say the same thing or? Yeah, I would say the same thing. Um, like I said, I've only spent just a little time in Sassua, but um, kind of more so based in maybe off of uh, Santiago or even the Santo Domingo where I spent most of my time whenever I go to Colombia. I mean, whenever I go to DR is Santiago, but same thing, man. They're, they're real nice, real formal, um, super nice girls, beautiful women. Um, you know, there are beautiful women all over uh, South America. So, I mean, I, I can't really, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Okay. Now, when I tell our brothers about, you know, Colombia, and, you know, my ex-girlfriend is Colombia, um, the first thing brothers uh, are going to mention is, you know, as far as safety. You know, South America in general has, like, a certain stigma about the cartels and the violence. Uh, did you guys, you know, uh, Dream starting off with you, did you feel safe out there in Colombia, brother? Pretty much, you know. 
Okay. It was on the time it, you had real problems was when you was walking through Park uh, Yaris and the police was out, you know, and they're not walking with uh, handguns. You know, they're walking with shotguns and, you know, the other one had some cross his shoulder. I don't know what it was, but uh, I did get shook down, you know, to the extent of while, uh oh, shout out to Richie Rich right there. That's Richie Rich. Rich. What's going on, Richie Rich? <laughs> What's going on, brother? Nothing much, man. I see y'all can't lie. Let's yeah, do. man. Yeah, man. We got to get you on here, brother. But, but what did you say, Andrees, though? You, you said you felt pretty safe out there? Yeah, for the most part, uh, other than just for like say one night when uh when I did get stopped by the police, I was uh actually I was walking from uh Rich's house, walking this lady back uh to the park. Um and that's when I was uh apprehended and take this off, take that off, and the other one standing there with his hands on his uh on his piece and whatnot, and I was, you know, practically Kind of humiliated. Oh man! You know, and, and what, yeah, I had to. Uh, what they do that for, though? I have no idea. You know, the first thing I thought about was everything that happened in Sassua. Right. You know, based with the type of people that's in that area and the type of uh, transactions that are going on in that area. You know, that's the first thing I thought about. I, but at the same time, I never saw anybody saying the news about. Uh, Anything from a uh, male or female relationship where something happened where it, it started to cause waves over here, but for us, any kind of civil unrest, it's a lot of civil unrest going on in the country in the other cities, which is Cali, Cartagena, and Bogota. You know, I was watching the news, I don't know Spanish. But if they saying civil unrest and they showing these three cities and it's and it's like homeless motherfuckers in the in the street with sticks, that's kind of like looking like civil unrest to me. But okay. you know that's where their tension may be coming from. But that's the, you know it was it was a tension out there. That's okay. what I'm saying. And when you say civil unrest, is that pretty much the people against the government? Well, it pretty much could be, especially with what's going on in Brazil right now. Right. Okay. You know, cause they cause they just stabbed him. You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, they they stabbing person people that's being president, out, and it will tell them what's gonna happen there. But all I can tell you is, for us Colombia right now, if you're visiting, Medellin is your best place to be. Okay. Okay. Now, now, Brian, did you feel pretty safe out there, brother? Yeah. Yeah. I I, I feel pretty safe. Um. With me, um, I didn't have any any issues at all, period. Um, and like I said, I'm sure, you know, one thing I do know about, about the country, they do, you know, they will protest. They will protest. I mean, they'll, they'll march. They'll, they'll do all kind of stuff. They'll, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I got to put you all on mute one second. Okay, no problem. Richie Rich, what's going on, brother? You there? Hey, yeah, what's up, man? I had muted myself. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Nothing much, man. What's going on with y'all, fellas? Uh, nothing much, man. We just in here chopping up about travel, about Columbia. You went down there too, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, you know. All right, all right. Hey, I'm sorry, man. I'm back. I have okay. Uh, okay, we're going to get back to you. We're going to get back to you in a second, Brian. All right. All right uh, so, Rich, you've been in Sassua and Columbia, right? Yeah, that's correct. What would be the major difference that you see in uh, the Colombia versus uh, the Dominican Republic? It's a big difference. Uh, man, one of the—I mean, it's a lot of differences, but one of the main things, man, is I want to say is customer service is a lot better and. Uh, Medellin and uh, Sassua, man. The people, they, they treat you a little better when you go to different places. Not saying Sassua, they don't, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying that was one of the major things I noticed. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. You know, 
some some of the people in the DR can be kind of rude at times. You know, like you know how you can go ask somebody to take a photo for you, they look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Some of yeah, them. yeah, that's true. Okay. And did you feel pretty safe down there while you was in Columbia? Yeah, man, I, I feel real safe in uh, the El Poblado area. You know, when you start going towards the center and uh, up, you know, uh, further on out, you have to, man, but uh, you know, you just have to be aware of your surroundings. I mean, you can't be a fool now, you know. Right. So, I mean, so yeah, I felt pretty safe, man. Okay, cool, cool. Now, uh, Drees, did you meet any women down there that spoke English? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's what I, that's the first thing I look for, you know, somebody speak English, make it easy for me, you know. Okay. But I, I, I did that same thing in uh, DR, and it, it, it cost me. Let's just say that. Right. But this go, this go around a little bit different. I was actually going to have an interview with the lady, but you know, since I've come home, she was upset that I didn't see her, and I was like, you know, uh, on to the next thing. But I had found uh, actually a few that spoke English. Okay, cool, cool. And would you say that the women of Colombia are more beautiful than women in DR? Or is it about the same? I mean, the thing about both of them in both countries is it's a simple fact that as far as uh, three things, which are hair, skin, and teeth, mm -hmm. both countries are on point with that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you got those two things, the uh, three things all together, all it's going to add up to is a beautiful person. You know what I'm saying? And and like I say, they had, it's, you know, in the poorest of places, they have their, their, their hygiene together. You know? Okay. But, you know, the Colombian over the Dominican overall. Okay, okay. Now, now, Brian, what you think about that, brother? What would you say uh, has the most beautiful women, the Dominican Republic or Medellin, Colombia? Oh uh, man, I would say, um, me personally, I would say, Colombia. Okay. Um, Colombia. Um, don't get me wrong. I spent a lot of time in DR as well, and um, my next trip, I'm actually going to DR first, um, for about four or five days. And mm -hmm. talk, you know, see some some of my friends over there, because I still have I still have ties and business in 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 um, Dominican Republic. But um, my heart, my heart is in Colombia. Um, in my opinion, um, the women that I've met um, are are very beautiful. Don't get me wrong, they're beautiful all around South America. I mean, all down there, you know, they're beautiful. But I also want to visit um, Brazil as well. I'll be in Brazil next year as well, so. But um, right now, I would say my heart is right there in, in Columbia. I met the most beautiful women down there. Okay. Richie Rich, what's up, brother? What what'd you think about that? Who has the most beautiful women, uh, the DR or Columbia? Uh, in my opinion, man, it just depends on your preference, man. And uh, I'll say this, man. If you're a guy you like, like, like light skin, red bone girls, and uh, more more of uh, more girls that kind of looks like black women almost. Then you you gotta go with the dr, you know. Uh, but if you like women more like uh, European style, I mean you got some of everything over there in Colombia, but uh, it, they're more like European looking women. Uh, they have real hair, you know. Dr. Girls uh, tend to have weave a lot, so uh, it just depends on what your personal preferences are. But they both got uh, a lot of women, you know. Uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with either one, man. I mean, I wouldn't take one from the other, but man, I would say if I had to pick one. I think I'm 
Uh, you, you broke up a little bit, brother. What you said? What was the last part? Which one you, you said? I said I wouldn't take one from the other one, but if I had to pick one, I would give Dr. the the uh, the advantage. But the Colombian women are more classy, more more they they more easy to deal with than the Dr. girls. The Dr. girls are a little a little harder to deal with, but. I still have to give that nod to the DR. I'm glad you made that point because that leads into this next question, man. Uh, which one of the uh, women have better attitudes, uh, do you think, Richie Rich, from your dealings with them? I definitely have to go with Columbia, man, because the girls out there are, you know, some of them are – straight up about their business and they're going to let you know like hey it's this and that you know they're not going to play games mm-hmm. and that's that's one of the big differences the dr girls in columbia they don't play games they don't try to call the cops on you they don't do all that righteousness they try to keep it classy if it's business it's business if they really rock with you on some no money you know, some real genuine stuff, then they rock with you, man. But, you know, it seems like you don't know what you're getting in DR, man. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, Drees, let me ask you this. Now, in the Dominican Republic, especially in Sosua, you see a lot of brothers, um, you know, visiting. You even see brothers with their own businesses out there. Do you see, did you see that in Medellin? Do you see, like, a lot of brothers kind of just, you know, building that brotherhood and having businesses down there? They, they had, not yet. There's a, I mean, there are uh, individuals down there, of course, mm-hmm. but they, I, if they, they got businesses, but they wouldn't have businesses in the places where I was at, you know. Oh, okay. But they do have individuals down there that are doing things, you know. Okay. Cause you was in the El Poblado area, right? That's like the ritzy part of Colombia. Is, is that right? Nah, nah, nah. Every. Uh, just about everybody else was in Poblado. I was a little bit north. I was in North Palmas. I was on some live like a local type shit. You know, like okay. I didn't want to be. I ain't want to be somewhere where all I'm hearing is club music, twenty four seven. You know. Got you. Got you. But okay. I, so so I went up the road a little bit. You know, it was like it was like eight of us stayed in Poblado. I was up the road from them in uh, Las Palmas, and it was three like, like three that stayed in like Lorelas. So I might have the numbers wrong, but it was something like that. We were spread out, so all we did was just centralize a spot to meet up, things of that nature. Okay, okay. Now, Brian, l- l- let me ask you this, brother. Uh, in your opinion, I'm gonna give you a tough question. We gotta spice it up a little bit. Who has better attitudes, uh, Colombian women, Dominican women, or American women? Oh, man, don't even get me started, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had, to, I had to give it to you first, man. I, I know you're going to give me the real on it. Um, myself, I've been, going to, I've been going to Dominican Republic for several years, several years. I mean, since 2009. So... Um, I have been, I have had experiences with all different types of women in Dominican Republic. Um, myself now, I've kind of weeded through a lot of the different women through my years. And now all the women I deal with there are, they cool. They cool. They, um, they regular nice girls that got jobs, things of that nature. So I don't really, I don't, me personally, the only thing I really deal with as far as attitude is, you didn't call me or I didn't I haven't talked to you in two or three days. Where you been? Something like that. Okay. Um, Columbia, pretty much kind of the same thing. You know, they, they're kind of clingy. The girls are kind of clingy. Um, the girls that I do know there, they, they nice girls, college girls. Um, they, you know, they work as far as, um, you know, in, at, at a, in maybe like a hospital or, and, um, you know, as a receptionist or something like that. One girl I know that she's a dentist. So, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're more clingy as well, you know, where, you know, they kind of, 
get upset with you if you don't give them a call, like you don't text them for a couple of days. And um, in America, United States, man, I. <laughs> are, are you tapped out? Huh? Are you, are you tapped out of American dating or are you still dating? I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out, man. I'm out. out. I'm here physically game? right now. I'm here physically. Well, uh-huh. Getting getting this bread. But I'm I'm um six my dude. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm checked out. <laughs> yeah, I'm checked out, man. I um you know, of course I still have friends, whatever, family, uh-huh. things of that nature, but um as far as um on a dating tip, uh uh-huh. no, I'm good. I'm good. It's a wrap. Okay. Now, now that's me personally. You know, I'm saying that in love. I'm, that's me personally. You know, I, I'm not saying I never will, but as of right now, at the point I am in my life now, man, it's a wrap. Okay. Okay. Now, 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 Richard, Rich, you down here in Atlanta, right, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. So, do you, do you currently date in, in Atlanta right now, or you kind of? <laughs> Uh, man, I'm, I'm day to day with that, bro. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm day to day with it, man. I'm still a little optimistic, but you know, at the same time, man, I, I date sparingly, man, you know, <clears throat> you know, so I hadn't gave up, but you know, Hey man. <laughs> right. Right. Now, now brother dreams, you down there in New Orleans and I know down there, man, I love the way the women talk down there, man. Like the way they I ask them just to say anything. Like when I go down to the to the Bourbon Street and go to Popeye's and you know, order some food, it's just the way they talk, you know, that that uh I guess you would say that slang or that accent is very sexy. Do you date out there in New Orleans or like the women in New Orleans? Because it's a somewhat of a different culture than the East Coast, you know, culture a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, of Atlanta and up north, uh, are the women in New Orleans dateable? Are they a little more genuine out there? Uh, let me preface it with this. Uh, when was the last time you was in New Orleans? I was in New Orleans in 2015. All right, I can't use that, one, but um, give me that question one more time. Are the women in New, in New Orleans uh, dateable? Like, do you date out there in New Orleans, or are you pretty much, uh, you know, date off and well, on? Well, thing about it for me, for us dating in New Orleans, the last woman I dated in New Orleans was a woman that don't it did not originate from New Orleans. Okay, I so bet. so if it's, if it's like that. They one of them in college or they passing through or they living here for a little while or something like that. I'll partake in that. But chick from the night ward, nah. Chick from the sim ward, sorry. You know, I'm I'm pretty much practicing abstinence on American soil right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um now you said the ninth ward, and those are like women. Is that that's kind of like the hood out there, right? Yeah, it's pretty rough out there. Okay, okay. Now, when you was in Columbia, uh, was you like in the middle class area, or would you say you was kind of in uh, maybe maybe a poor area? Nah, la vida como un local. I was living like a local. I was in the hood. Okay, you was in the hood. Now, what would be the difference in the women there in Columbia in the hood versus the women in the Ninth Ward in the Magnolia and all that? All right. When you go into Santo Domingo, uh huh. And I'm gonna just take that and compare that to like say the projects, what have you. You see these people are very, very healthy. Mm-hmm. Supposedly poor, but when you walk up there on that mountain, you see they got the cows over here, the chickens over there. They they not going to pick the wiggly. They not going to get that processed meat and, and all that you know all that food in this weed. You know, you know I we I was standing out there like with the little young soldier that was traveling with us. He up there, ah, oh, them the cows skinny. I like, bro, you don't understand. Those are healthy cows. What you used to see back home is a whole bunch of cows on steroids, player. 
you know? Right, right. So they kill what they eat and, and you know, they ain't doing no processing. They, they kill it and they washing the blood off and, and, and seasoning it, you know? So when you eat the chicken, it don't taste like what you're getting from the stove. You eating the beef, it don't taste like what you get from the stove, you know? Right there, right there, Dries. I didn't mean to interrupt you, brother, but you are absolutely right, man. Because when I went to Brazil, I was like, this meat does not taste like the meat back in the States. And I, I didn't know which meat was real. I said, damn, I don't know if I've been eating fake meat or they got fake meat. <laughs> and it was the same man, thing. They got all... I'm like, man, this this burger, even the texture, you know, is a little more, is a little different. But when you drive in the Dominican Republic, you will actually see the cows. And you absolutely right. Those cows are smaller out there. Right. So do you think that you know, we've been eating the, the ster steroid, you know, clone meat over here? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm thinking we're just eating, st just eating cows, on, uh, you know, cows and all that that's just got steroids in them. They're just trying to make bigger pieces of chicken. Right. You know, you you seen them, you seen them wings at TFC, you know? You you know, they, is, you there, know, is there a lot of fast food out there? Uh, actually, nah. Well, yeah, yeah they have like a uh, Burger King, but okay. you know, when you got so many people that sit right outside and sell chicken on the stick that come from the mountain, hey. Okay. You know, uh, you know, it's a whole lot of street vendors you know okay okay yeah now as far as the type of thing I, now i was saying that's the type of thing i'm gonna want to i would like to get into because it's a bunch of people that just you know pull pull up a spot and they, they got shoes sweatpants you know all that kind of thing okay. i get my hand on something like that okay cool cool and um now in in America, like in the hood in Ninth Ward, you know, uh, it's a lot of single mothers, a lot of kids, and pretty much the government, you know, gives, uh, you know, welfare, you know, food stamp section eight. Is that somewhat the same thing in the poor areas in Colombia? Do they get anything from the government or do they have like whole families that just don't have any money? You know, well. The thing is, they just, you know, poor is poor, but they make do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't have no uh, government they run into and all that there. You okay. know? Okay. You know, of course, they got that street light to turn to, but, you know, how they go about doing it, you know? You know, ain't that much they really have to make, you know, I guess. But they make do. They don't have a government to run to. You know, but they're not, you know, running around calling. Well, well, they're not running around calling themselves queens either. You know? <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Now, now, Brian, wh wh where are you from again, brother? I was born in Alabama. Okay, what part of Alabama? I lived, but I lived all over, man. South Alabama, okay. LA, Lower Alabama. <laughs> okay, I got family uh, from Birmingham. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I used to live in Birmingham, but I was born down there in Mobile. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And you say you uh where do you live at currently? Currently I'm in Tennessee, but I'm just working. I'm working I'm working in oil and gas. Oh in Tennessee okay. on the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. All right, cool, man. And uh are you are you like in a nice part, nice area in Tennessee and whatnot? Mm, man, I'm in the I'm in the backwoods, man. Okay. I'm in the backwoods. All you see is Confederate flags and and Ford trucks and okay. Dodge trucks. And shit. Oh man, yeah, that's tough. But it's cool. It's it's cool. I, I like it out here. It's, you know, it's, it's 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 quiet. I'm out here working, and making making this money. I'm in monk mode. Mm -hmm. So you know, as soon as I get out of here, which will probably be in December, December the fifteenth, and I'm um I'm headed to Atlanta for for a little while. Then I'm headed down to Alabama. Then I'm headed to DR. And I'll be in Columbia for I'll probably be in Columbia for about a month. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. And, and Rich Rich Rich. What's up, man? I know you down here in, in Atlanta, man. What part of Atlanta are you at? 
I'm gonna stone him out. Okay, you on the east side. Yep. Okay. East yeah. side, east side. <laughs> Where you at, man? You say he's in Tennessee right now. Oh, where, where am I at? Yeah. I'm I'm in the Camp Creek area. You know where that's at? Of course, you in the Atlanta. Swats, baby. You're in the Swats. Yeah, I'm, in the Swats man. I'm in the Swats, man. Yeah, man. It's it's funny, man, because once you get outside of Atlanta, that's when you see the Confederate flags and the, uh, you know, all the, you know, the camp signs and all that good stuff. So it's almost like they got us kind of surrounded a little bit, but when you get that passport and everybody on the panel has their passport, uh, you get a sense of uh, freedom, wouldn't you say, fellas? Like it's kind of like a sense of freedom when you're outside the states. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, man. This is it's a. I, I feel a whole lot better, man, when I'm out the states. It's it's an entitlement that you. So it's like like yeah, it's like an entitlement. Okay. Cool. Cool. Cool, man. And in like Medellin, Colombia, uh, is 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 did you see a lot of black Colombians out there? Dries? Yes. Okay. Okay. Did you kind of connect with the black Colombians more, more so than the you know the native Colombian? Well, I, I don't you know the blacks are native as well, but I guess you would say the lighter Colombians out there. Or is it more like Brazil? Well, let's just Brazil, say, it's kind of like it's just a big damn melting pot in Brazil. Like it's crazy. Like, but you know, I, I'm asking, like, is it kind of like did you kind of genuinely, you know, hang around the Black Colombians more? Well, I say this much: um, we did a lot more connecting with the lighter uh, Colombians. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I still smiled there, brother. That was uh, okay. All right. I got you. Oh man. Got you, got you, man. But uh, you see like some but, uh, dark my, Colombian women out there? Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I ran into a couple of them that was in the wait. Well, you don't know, but we had something called a boom boom room set up where we had everybody that was going to Colombia. And all the chicks that we knew from, say, Facebook, whatever, as long as they had a WhatsApp number. So a majority of the women that were in the boomer room, I say out about out about 30, probably met about 20 of them, you know. Mm -hmm. Spent time, I probably spent time with a couple of those. But it was all about, you know, uh, making connections outside of relationships you know where's the this where's the that how we get here what we do you know what how do we do this you know just that type of thing and also to help you know get your pre-game as long as well as your spanish show you know? got you got you okay and this leads into uh i'm not even sure this is a question but when i was in brazil man um a black brazilian woman accused me of liking the lighter uh brazilian woman she was like you like you like you know, the white Brazilian women. I'm like, no, nah, but she was just so aggressive. Like in Brazil, what you're gonna find out is when you, when you go in the club, right? And you sit down and they find out that, that you're American, it's, it, it's on lock. They put you on lock. What they gonna do is they're gonna sit in your lap and they're not gonna go anywhere. So you gotta kind of tell them like, listen, I just got here, you know, it's nice to meet you, but you know, I just walked into the club, you know? Did you see that a, a little bit at uh, Dries? Where like the, the sisters kind of like, you know, the darker Colombian women, where they kind of trying to lock y'all down a little bit? What I'm trying to ask mm -hmm. is basically, is it kind of like a competition between the black Colombian nah. and the lighter Colombian woman? Did you notice that? No. Okay. No, nah, I, I didn't. I didn't see that. What it is? But for as competition is concerned. When we well, when I created the whole boom boom room thing, it was just people that we all knew, and as a, you know, a just collective. But being in the lifestyle that they're in, a lot of them know each other, so it might have been previous beefs that might have sat at chat room. So that first boom boom room had to be disconnected because there was too much thing, too many things going on, and there was a chat room that's in my group. 
or in the group rather that had a lot of uh problems with uh certain a certain girl or certain girls fighting up against another girl because they know him and things of that nature because he was one of the guys that previously traveled to Medellin and hooked up with a certain lady that was in the chat room so and besides I had opened that chat room up a little bit too early mm-hmm. so I waited till week, till about a week before we left to reopen it and reconnect with those uh ladies that we had in the room, room previously okay cool 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 now now Brian let me ask you this when you date in Colombia, do you date like the, the lighter Colombian woman or do you kind of like, you know, it doesn't really matter to you? Do you have a preference? Um, no, man, I don't have a preference. <clears throat> um, it's, it's so many beautiful women. Um, it, 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 man, it don't matter, man. I have so many different females that I know over there that I've dealt with or dated mm. or just met, you know. That I did, that I haven't dated. That's just we just keep in touch, and um, and yeah, it's it doesn't matter. I got a real good friend over there. She's um, Afro-Colombian, and um, you know, and she's you know she's more so brown skin. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a darker skin female down there. I deal with you know that I that I know that I talk to, um, and when it comes to the clubs. Um, this kind of piggyback off what Dries was saying as far as actually when we were actually there. And I had this experience in Bogota, not so much in Medellin, but in Bogota. When you go to the clubs, um, um, mainly the strip clubs, um, you know, it might be 80 or 90 different females and, and they all just stand up in front of like in a line, like, like that movie, uh, Rush Hour. Mm-hmm. That's how it is. They they just stand and I put these videos in the in the in the uh, WhatsApp room, but they just stand they just stand there and they just wait to get chose. They don't really come up to some of them will come up to you, but they don't just come up and just choose and like you know I mean you know all in your lap and trying to you know like that. They'll just stand up. They'll stand up and they'll pose and they'll model and they'll you know do stuff like that, ma'am. So, um, and, and this is this is a strip club down there. Yes, I put the videos. I I repost them in the chat room. You'll see. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. They stand up and they just kind of stand there and they look pretty, and you sitting there drinking your drink or sitting in your little section, and they just all around. I mean, I mean, literally anywhere, anywhere between forty and sixty girls at any given time, and they just standing there and they all eyes on you, and they just waiting on you to choose them. You just you you point at them, tell them to come here. They come sit down with you and you talk with them or whatever you know whatever case may be. But um, but yeah, it's lovely. Okay, cool, 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 man. And um, like, how important is it to know Spanish down there, Brian? Is it like real important, or can you kind of navigate without knowing any Spanish at all? Or do the guys need to kind of, you know, you got to, in my opinion, uh-huh. at least some type of conversational Spanish. You need to know your money, you know, your 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 pesos, um. You know, if not, you gonna get gringo tax. You know, um, get into a cab. I mean, they gon' they gon they a lot of times what I've seen and what some guys have told me, and I actually had to check a, a taxi driver one time is they'll set that they'll set their um, meter up. You know, where they start where they started off with a whole lot with a whole lot more than what they're supposed to, or they'll turn it off and then at the end of the trip they'll say, oh, you go you owe me a certain amount. So what I do is I always just pay them up front. Hey, take me here. Here you go. To, here, here, here go the money. Take it or leave. You know, so um, so you know know the money first of all. Even when you're eating, going out to eat, if you go to these mom and pop places, um, they'll try to they'll try to they'll try to charge you a little extra. You know, if you don't know what the, what the prices are, if you can't read the signs and know what the prices are, you're supposed to be paying. Yeah, they will get you. You'll give them a certain amount of money, and they'll give you your change, and it won't be the exact change that you that you should get. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I had to check a guy on that um, my last trip there. I had to get on get on a guy there and he he got, you know, he kind of booked up at me at first. But when he figured out I knew what I was talking about, then he he went on and kind of backed down a little bit after he figured out I knew what I was talking about. But um but yeah, I would say in in Colombia, mm-hmm. um, 
if, if you at least know some type of conversation in Spanish, a lot of the girls they will kind of shy away from you if you start to start talking to them in in, um, in, in English. You gotta know at least a little conversational Spanish, you know. And if you're trying to learn, or if you're really trying to get into their heritage or their culture, um, that goes a long way. Uh, most women in Colombia, they want you to get in tune with their culture. They're not really trying to get in tune with our culture. They're not really trying to come to America and live the American dream and marry a man in America and come to America. No, you come there. Mm-hmm. You get in line, get in tune with their culture. You know what I'm saying? That's just my experience. You know what? That's very funny you say that because when I was in Bogota, um, I had a female taxi driver and she was like, I don't like America. I went to America. I stayed there for a couple of months and it's all about money, 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 money. She was just like, I'd rather stay in Colombia, even though we don't have nearly as much money as Americans do. You know, we're more genuine. And she said this. I was like, wow, that's because in most cases, when you travel, like even in Brazil, everybody's trying to get back to America, you know, for the most part, you know. So that's very true. Extremely true. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, man, is quality of life. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I was reading this article and the guy was talking about how, you know, like you can get on a plane, you can fly a coach, or you can fly first class. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you still, you still get to the destination. You know, if if you're happy, it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Those people over there, that they're they're happy. They're happy with the five hundred dollars a month they're getting. They still have a good quality of life. They have their family. They're happy. They're resilient. I mean, you you know you like I said, five hundred dollars a month, and they are just the happiest people you ever want to meet. Because they live in, they live in life and they're happy. You know? I know a lot of poor people they got millions of dollars, but they poor in the mind. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They they not happy. They got as much money as they want. But they poor because they that their mentality. They always looking over their back. They always you know what I'm saying? They they, they don't know how to be happy. You know? But I know plenty of people that I know more people that with less money. There's more that's that's happy and they're living life and they and they're having a good time. Okay, okay. And traveling and traveling, you you get a different mindset. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's that's what happened with, with me. When I get to traveling, I see that I have a different outlook on life because I've traveled all around the world. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. That's what's up. Yeah, do you speak? Yeah, Brian, do you speak any uh, Spanish? Because oh, I know I'm, I've been learning a little Spanish here and there. Yeah, I, I, I learn a little. I put it like this: When I come back to America, I, it's it's like it's kind of like when you go to different parts of America. You know, when I go up to, to to New York, I speak a little more like a New Yorker. When I go down south, I speak a little more kind of back like I'm down south. When I get to Columbia and DR, when I get there, my Spanish gets a whole lot better than it is when it's here because I'm surrounded by it. I'm saturated in it, you know? Okay, okay. And that's, that's, just, that's, just my, that's just my experience. I get a whole, I, 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 um, I understand it more. I can speak it more. It comes, it comes a little bit easier and faster back to me when I'm actually in these countries. Mm, okay. And, and Dries, uh, you said you went yeah. a little. You went a little bit outside of Medellin, right? You said you went a, a little exploring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what traveling is about, you know. Uh-huh. I had planned to do an in trip, uh, uh in trip flight to Cartagena with the group, but that kind of fell through. Okay. So what happened was, uh, shout out to uh, brother Sebastian and Mrs. Margarita for they took me out to a place called Santa Fe. And I was out there on the, uh, I think the Amazon, or uh, some uh, river that's connected to the Amazon. But it's about an hour and a half, damn near two hours outside of Medellin. If you need to map, I couldn't do it to save my life. But uh, went out there and had a lead tour, and they was, we walked through the city. I haven't posted anything online yet, but. To the people who are subscribers, be looking for it in the coming weeks. I got like, uh, I got like too much to uh, edit and just all oh, put it all online. Nah, I, I made sure I recorded enough to last me the next next time I leave. Mm-hmm. You know, but 
walk went through the city and learned the history of the city that it's the uh Santa Fe was the actual form, was the former capital of Antioquia, you know, the state that Colombia is in. I mean, the state that Medellin is in, excuse me. But uh, Nice Led Tour was, you know, uh, like I said, it was an hour and a half, two hours outside of Medellin, came on back. I was supposed to take another real estate, but the thing was, I really wanted to take the real, another the real estate tour inside of the uh, city of Medellin, which I never got the opportunity to take because I, I had lost contact of her by that Monday. You know, I think she was uh, busy with another tour going back up to Santa Fe. So having to come back, you know, after five hours of riding on that road, you know, I don't think that would have been uh, something to be able to be accomplished. But Santa Fe was nice. I'll be posting that in the say coming week or so. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Richie, Richie, there. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. And let me ask you this, man: How long have you had your passport? Um, well, I had got my passport back in I want to say '98, man. Oh, you had your passport uh, for a minute. Yeah, I had. I had it and it expired for a while, mm -hmm. and then uh, I had re-upped up on it like four years ago. So, <coughs> okay, was it what is was it like a specific reason you got your passport? Did you have a trip planned, or you just went ahead and got it the first time or the second time? Uh, let's just go the second time, second time around. Uh, yeah, man, I wanted to do some traveling, man. man you know, I had been stateside for a while, and uh, Mm -hmm. I used to go to Canada a lot, and then they wanted to get into Canada, man. They started wanting you to, uh, well, they said it was going to have it mandatory for passports. So, and I said, well, let me go ahead and get it. So, uh, I went back and got it and uh, did some more traveling and whatever. Okay. And that was the main reason I had got it at the time. I got a, uh, I got family up. Up in Niagara Falls area, so when I go up there, I go to Canada and Toronto sometimes. Okay, okay, cool. Now, Brian, how, how long have you had your passport, bro? Um, I got a passport in two thousand two. Okay, so you had your passport. Man, I'm the last person to get my passport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I first started going um to Germany. Oh, was, okay, okay. Yeah, I went to Germany, Amsterdam. <laughs> Um, England and Belgium and all different cities down there. Cool, cool. And, and how how was Europe? How was it? Did you like it? Oh man, I loved it. I've been back several times since, and um, I love it. I love Europe, man. I love Germany. I love um, the Netherlands, England. I think I had enough of England. <laughs> right. England got a lot of my money, man. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, it's, 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 it's um, I haven't been in a while, but it, last time I went, it's, it was it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. But um, not to deter anybody from going, I would I would um, encourage anybody to go. And um, it's not very expensive as far as um, if you if you know just want to go, but just on what you want to do. That's all. Okay, so um, Brian, you you've been on this for a minute, bro. Because most guys are kind of recently, if they had a passport at all, they just not kind of getting their passports. So you've been on your travel game for a minute, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I um, I first started traveling for family because of family because my godmother, mm -hmm. she's Dutch, so she lived here in the states, and you know all of her family, my god brothers and god sisters, they all come, they all just come in and see her because she married a man from America when he was in the military years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got a little bit older, they was like, hey, why don't you come see us sometime? Why don't you come to the Netherlands and see us sometimes? So I was like, and, and these, these were black Dutch people? Yes, they look they look like me and you. Yep. So they got they got black people in the Netherlands. Oh yes. I can put pictures on online on, on in the group, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. They they look like me and you. Um some of them look a little more Indian. Uh-huh. But um but there's several of them that, you know, they got them. Light, light, bright skin. They got them black as days of spade. It don't matter. <laughs> wow. And are, are they dealing with any racial issues that you know of out there? Nah. I got much love out there, man. Nothing but love. 
Germany, I got I got nothing but love. Uh-huh. Um, Belgium, I, I mean, like I said, man, England, nothing but love. I've never been to France, but um, from what my friends say, it's it's not so much of of, of your color. It's just where you're from. They don't, if they know you're from America, they treat you just a little bit different sometimes. And that's just coming from that's, that's hearsay. That's from what my friends tell me. I don't. I've never been there, so I don't know. But as far as um, as far as like racism, as far as colorism, no, no, they don't. I, I've never had an issue at all. Not even one time in Europe. And I've been going, like I said, since 2002. Okay, so Brian, I, I got to ask you, man. This might be a little bit of a tough, <laughs> a tough one, brother. But you know, I got to get at you. Why cool. do you think is everything is so racialized in America versus? overseas is it because you know we have a large population over here or um i've that's a hard that is a hard question right a lot of a lot of it i think is the it, it's a, it, i think it's a mixture it's a mixture of different things um culture you know how people were raised um the internet um Social groups that people are that people are in. Um, you have some people. They and like I said, one thing that I think is a major influence is travel. You have certain people. All they know is their fifty mile radius that they live in. That's all they know. They never been anywhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, they never seen in a certain type of people. I'll give you a prime example, and this is more of a broader example, and this is a personal example that I've had. Um, when I went to Germany, I know I have friends over there, and they are they're Muslim, you know, and they and they full they the full Muslim. They wear the turbans. They wear you know they look like Bin Laden <laughs> pretty much. You know what I'm saying? They they wear they they grow the they grow the facial hair, and so nicest people they ever want to meet. Um, I take a lot of pictures with them. You know, take a lot of pictures, and so when I come back, I show pictures to my family. Mm-hmm. So my mom, my grandmother, oh, you over there taking pictures with them? With, with them terrorists? Oh my God! Was you say? I'm like, what are you talking about? They're not terrorists. Yeah, but they, they look like terrorists. Man, you just going on what somebody said off TV, um, you know. And all Muslims aren't terrorists. Of course, you have some extremism, but not ninety percent of them, not more than ninety percent of them, uh, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not, you know, hateful at all. They're not. Um, there's no type of a situation like that with them at all. As a matter of fact. They were the nicest people I met in my life, man. They, and they, you know, and you know, I went to their home. They cooked, you know, um, very welcoming people. So just that, just that kind of, they see something and automatically they have a, you, you have a certain stereotype, you know. I'm, I was the same with the Colombia. Mm-hmm. I was going to Dominican Republic for several years, years and years and years. I met a black guy over there when I went over there one time. And he said, man, you ever thought about going to Colombia? I said, hell no, nah, man. <laughs> so I, ain't going over that. Right. I, said, I, ain't, I said, I ain't going over that. Man, number of drugs and cartels and stuff. It's woods and jungles. He said, no, nah, dog. He said, no, nah, let me show you something. He's showing some pictures. I was like, oh, my God. So that's what kind of piqued my interest. And this was years ago. That was back in 2000 and I think, 14. I just started going to Columbia until just a year ago. And, mm-hmm. um, and um, he piqued my interest back then. So when I had an opportunity to um, go, I was working in Puerto Rico, and um, I was like, man, I had some time off. I said, man, I'm going to go to Columbia, see what, see what all the fuss about my buddy told me about. So, boom, I went over there, man, and I fell in love, man. I forgot all about DR. I got, I got a property in DR I bought in 2012. Mm-hmm. I forgot all about that. <laughs> wow. I'm just, wow. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to, I ain't worried about that no more. I'm trying to get some property in, D, in, uh, in Columbia now. Okay, okay. Drees, how long you had your uh your passport, brother? I got my passport September 2016. Okay, so kind of that's kind of like me. That's more these brothers been <laughs> had their passports for a minute now. But yeah, okay. Did you have a specific reason for getting your passport, or you just was just like fucking? I'm gonna go ahead and grab my passport. Well, <clears throat> I always did want to travel. I, I I didn't. I had what I had. Um, on the uh, website scene, you know, with the travel site, you know, and then when I got my uh, passport in September, um, 
and started messing with the travel sites, finding out this, that, and that. That's how I ran into Telemade Dreams and, and started uh, making moves with the uh, group over there he has. And, uh, and the first thing I did was I went to, uh, well, I was on my way to Dominican Republic, but I, I didn't leave because I didn't know whether or not uh, I needed a visa or not. You know, I didn't know what places you could go to a visa at the time. Okay. So I just held off. So I just held off going anywhere until what? Yeah, I, I just held off for like a year. And that's, that next year I went to Columbia. Then I went to Sasua, checked that out. And then I was like, I'm not coming back to Sasua. I went back to Medellin. You know, and that's where I'm at right now. So I've been, in one calendar year, I did 12,000 miles. So okay okay well all right then i think we uh been at it for a minute now we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up fellas uh one last question man and i'm gonna let everybody you know say their piece and we can go and get out of here if you were forced to leave the states tomorrow what country would you guys pick starting with you brian <laughs> i think i already know the answer but <laughs> what would you pick man he's unanimous man all, all columbia. Four, huh? columbia yeah um I got a lot. I have a lot of um, ties in Columbia. <clears throat> uh, now, as 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 I do in 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 DR as well. Like I say, I have a place in DR, so I can go to DR anytime I want to go. But um, I got money, so I can go to Columbia and I can get an Airbnb or I can rent an apartment, whatever I want to do. So, um, but yeah, it'll be Columbia, no no doubt, no doubt. Okay. And and Dries, that's that's pretty much the same for you. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Richard Rich. What you think, brother? What's up? Hey, man. I, I'm right now because I'm just coming off Columbia. I'm gonna say Columbia, man. But it's not a, it's not a knock on DR. It's just Columbia still on my mind right now. So, yeah, I definitely would have go ahead and jump on that train. Okay. Yeah, I've never been. I've never been to Brazil. So, uh -huh. I, and 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 I'm going next year. So, I mean, hey, Brazil might. It might take some some shine too. I really don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank all the fellas, man. Hey guys, man. Just so y'all know, WTU community is the livest group out there, man. Like them guys be having these roles <laughs> all day long, you know. And I even got a, I, I even got a little beef with some of the members in the group for getting at some of my ladies in, in the Dominican Republic, but we'll talk about that. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hey Aaron, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, the main, the main is in the group now, so I mean, you can still email him, but he's in the WTU group. Who that now? Oh, okay, okay. The main, you, you, you in the group, bro? Okay, cool. Yeah, he just joined, man. All right, cool, cool, cool. Appreciate it. Hey, 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 Aaron. Uh huh. You got a whole lot of mains, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, you guys have the livest group, man. I love the way brothers is, are exchanging information within the group. You know, everybody's coming from different places in different cities. Everybody's getting along well. And you know, it's funny, man, because once if you look at it, like once you take, you know, let's just keep it real, once you take the woman off the pedestal, brothers can kind of get along. You know, once we stop, you know, beefing and trying to compete with each other for, you know, some of these American women that ain't, that ain't really about shit in the first place, you, you will see that brother is kind of getting along and we're getting along better and we're rebuilding a brotherhood that's kind of reminiscent of what we did in the Black Wall Street days, man. So, shout out to y'all brothers, man. Uh, thank you for coming on to the channel, to the show, man. Hey, you guys, uh, Brian, you got a YouTube channel? Uh, I, I do, but I, I'm going to start putting some more information on it, some more uh, content on it here pretty soon. But I've had it for a while, but I just never really did anything with it. I need to, though, man. I, I've been traveling so long. I got so much content, man. I just never I just never really thought about doing anything on YouTube. But now, man, the guy's kind of, kind of, you know, hey, man, you ought, you ought to do a YouTube joint, man. So I'm going to do it, man. I'm going and, and start me a little something. Yeah, but that that would be awesome, man. You got a lot of information, bro. So that that would be excellent, man. Yeah, and I archive everything, man. My father's a professional photographer. 
Okay. So, um, and I and I'm in photography as well, so I archive everything. I got I got pictures way back from 2002. <laughs> oh, oh, shit, that's gonna be live right there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, Dries, I know you got a YouTube uh, channel. I'm gonna put your uh, the link in the subscription. Yeah. Okay. Anybody? Anything you want to say before we go? Uh, yeah, man. Um, uh. Shout out to WTU and everybody, the chat room. Shout out to everybody in the uh, uh, in uh, Medellin, uh, Sebastian, Margarita, uh, Levine, Catherine, uh, Lorena, Manuela. Also, shout out to Brother Domain. Welcome to the club. Uh, shout out to the Yin team. Shout out to everybody, even in the Boom Boom room. But to everybody, I got to say that a, a thing that we all deal with after we leave our respective paradises is withdrawal. Or should right. I say PVD? Or uh, uh, post-vacational depression. Man, but a recurring phrase that I heard, phrase I heard this time was, man, you the reason I came, Dries. You know? Man, you know, it made me feel good inside to see a brother feeling healthy. He made the right decision based off some information I give it. Right. You know. And for me, like I said, you know, when you're leaving, you're looking out that plane, you're getting them tears. For me, this time it came for a different reason. Mm -hmm. So uh I just consider it PBD averted this time, you know. And I'd like to thank every last one of those brothers for coming out. I like to thank every last one of those beautiful sisters, uh, sisters that came out, and for WTU, for Rich and Rich, for everybody in WTU. This is Dries, Jedi. Oh, Thanks, yeah, man. All right, man. Rich and Rich, anything you want to say before we get out of here, brother? Yeah, man. I want to shout out to all the WTU family. Uh, shout out to uh, Demain and. Uh, Caribbean Conquest, shout out to Chris Dogan, uh, shoot me the brother number and everything. Shout out to uh, This Is Ace Live, you know. Uh, shout out to everybody in uh, Medellin, if you're listening. Damn, I miss y'all already. And, um, man, I'm just telling y'all, man, like, the trip is was so epic, bro. I mean, like I say, the people over there were nice, hella nice. You know, uh, the camaraderie between the brothers was amazing, man. Brothers was checking in with each other. Brothers needed information, man. Shout out again to uh, that brother Gator. Shout out to Domain again, man. They really helped us out a lot on the trip, man. Shout out to Drees for putting the itinerary, itinerary together and everything. The guys that didn't make it, man, I'm telling y'all, man. I mean, a video ain't going to do it justice, man. The camaraderie we showed, man, and meeting each other, checking in with each other. Where you at, brother? You need this, brother. Hey, I need some condoms. Hey, man, you got some blue pills, brother. I, hey, just helping brothers out, man. Brothers was, <laughs> brothers was at the spot cleaning up, helping me wash dishes and grown-ass right. fucking men, helping me do stuff, and we was just helping each other, man, stuff I'd never really seen over here in the States, man. So, I mean, it was a hell of a trip, man. Hell of a bond. I had plenty of people call me and like, hey, man, I appreciate you and Dries, man, putting the trip together and coming up with all this, man. And, you know, these brothers were way more traveling experience than me. So, I mean, it, it was crazy, man. It was just unbelievable, man. Our brothers came together, and I hope we could do another trip. I know I'm taking all your time up, but... uh. Anyhow, shout out to your show. You know what I'm saying? And uh, everybody listening out, just subscribe, man. Like and share the videos, man. It's the only way we can build this thing, man. So y'all like, share, and uh, anyhow, that's all I got to say. Appreciate you. All right, then. All right, fellas. Till next time. We're going to do that just again. One more. Appreciate it, man. One more thing. Uh, okay, Dries. To the people. To and going to Medellin, uh -huh. there just may be another trip to Medellin in May. Stay okay. tuned to WTU. All right, cool. Awesome, man. All right, then, fellas.
Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having us. All right, cool. All right. Peace. Peace.